Hey guys, welcome back to Small AFK Arena. In today's video, we're going to be going through my top five tanks in the game to invest in. We did the DPS already. We will be doing a support one, so links to those if they're made will be in the description. But this time we're doing tanks, so let's get into it. Okay, before we get into it, a few more disclaimers and stuff like that. Now, I didn't do a good enough job on explaining it in the DPS one. Um, this is ranked on multiple factors, PvE, PvP, everything, but also um, on longevity of the hero, meaning if you build them now, um, even if they're not the best, their potential to become good just based on their skill sets and stuff like that. I hope it kind of makes sense. Uh, another thing, uh, Stitchy's not going to be in there, even though he is a tank, he ranked in the DPS because he's just an insane damage dealer, so he doesn't get to come into the tanks. Um, another one that could sometimes climb into the tank range, didn't make it on the DPS either, he's sort of in between, is Izold. He's an absolute fantastic unit, and like he's sort of pseudo tank sometimes, but sometimes he doesn't work as a tank, and sometimes he can be a carry DPS. So he's not on either of the lists, but he's a fantastic unit to invest in anyway. Oh, and also, no solution. Celestials, Hypergenes, or Dimensionals on this list. They'll probably get their own list later on, so keep that in mind. So number five on the list is going to be Lucius. Now, he was close to not getting on the list because he just drops off so much in the late game, but because he is such a powerhouse in the early game, and I feel like there would be a lot of uh, players, new players, getting information from this video, Lucius is probably the best tank in the early game. If you're starting a fresh account, I still put him on the wish list of every account. Up until about chapter 24, 25, 26, even maybe 27, he is a fantastic tank and really helps your early game progression. So I definitely think putting him on the wish list early is nice. If you're around chapter 24 and you don't have him built, I wouldn't stress about it. He still does have the use in the future of like uh, things like Labyrinth and stuff, his shield's nice, but normally you're not going to need it. But Lucius, just basically his shields, his healing, everything scales so good in the early game that he's absolutely fantastic. But like I said, he really does drop off in the later game when the pressure from the enemy teams just becomes greater. He just doesn't have quite just the scaling required for him to function, but still great hero nonetheless and worst case if you build him early game and this is what i say about any character you build early game as long as you don't invest too much in the into their signature item so this guy you i wouldn't invest in furniture or signature item maybe just unlock it level 10 at the most um as long as you don't invest you can always link him to an dimensional later and he still has a use in the future number four on my list is going to be gorvo not just because he has an absolutely wicked design but this guy uh i, I like him in pvp He's okay in campaign in certain comps. Uh, for instance, Chicken Iron. Everyone knows how much I love that comp. His um, Shell Shock, which he just does there, um, is really useful for it. But also the shields um, and being able to mitigate damage and reflect some damage back is really nice. But the big thing is that Shell Shock, when he can infiltrate the enemy's um, lines and basically just jump in and stun and provide some disruption on the, that enemy team. Now, he's not going to be a hero that's ever like number one pick for any position in any team but he's a really good counter pick option uh, to sort of infiltrate and like I said just disrupt the enemy formation but also in that chicken ear on comp really useful so that is why Gorvo got number four number three on my list does go to Brutus now there's two key reasons that I put Brutus on this list he is he was very very heavily overrated well not overrated maybe manageably so at the start of the game like when the game launched everyone loved Brutus everyone wanted Brutus he was like amazing I think the reason Brutus got really hyped at the start of the game was because he was in the purchasable pack with gear so people who spent bought a Brutus got an elite plus straight away made him legendary straight away and then they had gear for him and he just dominated but Brutus really is just a tank doesn't cut it with damage and stuff like that. But the two reasons he makes number three on this list is his invincibility. Um, eight seconds of immunity is fantastic anywhere. Um, there's a lot of situations where you can just put even an elite Brutus in, um, but having an invested one ain't too bad. The investment portion of him comes in this ability here. Uh, let's add a terrifying roar that causes enemies to become more vulnerable, increasing physical damage they take, um, but also... Uh, and attacks cannot be dodged. So that level three skill up, that means attacks cannot be dodged is very crucial to this. Um, allowing you to counter dodge tanks, things like Kaz and stuff like that, really, really helpful in some stages. And that's where having a built Brutus can be really handy um, because then he can survive longer and apply that raw and be more effective with it. The other cool thing about Brutus is what I normally do. He's normally on my wish list on my accounts. 
And then once I get him ascended, because he's very niche use, I just bind him to a dimensional. And then the odd situation, if I need him, I slot him into the team. If the other dimensional's in the team, then I just unbind, use that Brutus, and then bind back later. So he's just, just got that two real bits of staying power that just make him not like a guaranteed tank that you put in every formation, but just a fantastic tank to slot into certain teams to counter the opposition. Number two on my list is going to be my boy Scrag. I've loved this guy's design since the start of the game. He got a full rework, which made him decent. And then he got furniture, which put him at number two on this list. So there's a few things about Scrag. The cool thing is um, when he's mounted and riding, He's knocking enemies back and stuff like that, um, also knocking them down. But on top of that, he's immune to control abilities. The one thing that doesn't get stated is that he's also pseudo immune to some control abilities from the get-go when he's not even mounted. Um, things like Euron's Drag and stuff like that, he does get immunity to those. So it's really nice for that. Uh, the Iron Jord, uh, which one am I looking at? This one here. Um, he gets damage mitigation up to 60% depending on how close he is to the enemies. And because he can mount up so quick with his signature item um, and start infiltrating the enemy lines, makes it really powerful damage mitigation in that sense. Um, and then also this one. We have the Iron Jaw that runs across, knocking enemies back, has a lot of synergies with different things, allowing your team to advance forward, which allows the implication of his furniture. So Allied Hero, the all allied heroes within the enemy's half of the battlefield have their attack ratings increased by 20% and also uh, receive 25% less damage from enemy attacks. And then allied heroes recover 100 energy points every three seconds in the enemy's half of the battlefield. So this specifically furniture is what I think on top of those other features, but is what I specifically think is going to keep Sk Skreg relevant and what has given him relevance in team comps because as more heroes that go into the enemy's lines come into the game, it just makes him more and more relevant. Something like Zafrael at the moment, fantastic. Even Lucretia when she goes forward and attacks an enemy. Um, just strong heroes that infiltrate enemy lines get stronger with Skreg. And that's why I think he's always going to be somewhat relevant because if the meta unit at the time is a lunger, instantly Scrag becomes good. So that's why he's number two on the list. And number one on the list is Cheeseballs himself, Thorin. This guy, a one-man winning team. Like the cool thing about him is, um, yes, he does need a team built around him and he needs the right RNG in the formation to be able to win. Um, he's become much more relevant with the change to campaign stages, how you can retry a specific stage, meaning um, even if you've got low success rate on the Thorin Cheese, which is basically getting every enemy in on him, um, he uses his ultimate, he can't die when he's charging, um, and then he reflects all the damage and basically one-shots the whole enemy team. It's a really good strategy, but due to the fact that in campaign, um, he's able to just keep retrying on a certain stage to do this, it makes him so much better. Like He was always good, but now when you get to those multi-stages, he's even better. Um, I think he has the highest usage of tanks in the end game uh, at the moment because just because of that factor. He's he's a one-man winning team. The uh, the allies on the team that sort of shift the positions, um, things like Nara, Kalther, sometimes Iron you can use as well, depending on how many teams you're building. Um, those can all be at low ascension as well, so you don't have to have them completely built. They just have to make that function of dragging the enemies towards Thorin, and then he can do his thing. So because he's a cheese ball winner, solo team by himself, cheese balls gets the rank one position. Anyway, let me know what you think of my list. What would you change? What is your list? Um, hopefully this one goes down as well as the DPS, but we will be back another time with the support list. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.